G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the BR-77 Battle Rifle. You might recognize this particular weapon from the Halo franchise, and that is indeed what it is from. Now, this is a big one, lads. This is one hell of a mod. Ultra customizable standalone weapon with custom sounds and animations. Well, there's a lot to get through, so without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, for the receivers, we've got a couple of different levels here. We've got the standard receivers going up to superior, same with hardened. And we got the same thing going with the advanced receiver. So the advanced superior receiver will give us 126 damage, which is a pretty damn good start. We are firing 45 ACP, so yeah, pretty damn good for that. Now, I want to make this thing a DMR from Halo Reach, because Halo Reach had the best art direction of all Halos, and I will fight you on this. We've even got a little bit of a flashlight there. I wonder if that'll work. Not sure. Anyways, for the stocks, we're going to scroll right to the bottom and chuck on this tactical stock. That'll help us out with the rare curl the most, and it'll give us a little bit more accuracy, which is nice, at the expense of a little bit more weight, but that's okay. Now, for the magazine, you can go from all the way from small up to big old drums in your thing. Um, drums at 99 capacity is quite a lot. I've actually found that this one will give me um, 60 capacity, which is more than enough. So, yeah, I actually kind of like the aesthetics of this one a little bit more. Even if you want to go and overkill this, that's a perfectly viable option too. Probably even a little bit better, to be honest, but we'll move on. Now, for the sights, you've got... A whole bunch of sites are going here, I'll just quickly scroll through them. If I go ahead and explain each and every one of these, we'll be here all bloody day. So there we go. I'm going to go for a DMR scope of the Times 4 variety. I'm, uh, I'm really committed to making this DMR, and you will see it. So look at all this stuff. It's so cool. Oh my god, there's so much customization. Too much. Anyways, we'll move on to the top rail here, and we'll change that to the DMR variant. And we've gone ahead and either... Yeah, I think we've unlocked another thing because our mod um, attachment slot just changed. Okay, so we've got a burst fire firing mode here. We're going to change that to rapid burst fire. Um, this weapon in particular, or this weapon mod, has the best and most fluid burst firing I've ever used. So that's really, really good. It's also worth mentioning this ammo counter while it's here is actually able to move. I've got the variant that um, doesn't actually count down with the ammo and that is because it stutters the crap out of my computer. My puny little GTX 960M definitely needs an upgrade. Anyways, we'll move on from that. We can change the ammo modifier. Since we are playing a child of Adam, we're going to go for some radiation modifier that'll also help us target human targets, but not really that much else. We can change our ammo counter color to green and that'll work for our child at bottom character and we'll put a big old um shush tube on the front there uh, not really a big thing but actually it's kind of small and um uh subtle but yeah it'll actually give us um all of the benefits of a suppressor without actually giving us damage or range penalties so yeah even with um ace operator we seem to override that damage penalty anyway so never mind Okay, moving on to the laser sight, we can go and chuck on a green one with that. That'll increase hip fire accuracy, so it does have function, which is nice. We can chuck a, a component sensor, which will detect components from dead enemies. Personally, I think it ruins the aesthetic of the weapon, so I'm just going to leave that off, and I think we can do without its um, special effect. Anyway, we'll chuck on a weapon proficiency display. We'll get to more of that later, but now it just slotted us into some um, ammo things. We'll, Come back out of that. Where were we? Oh yes, you can attach a stim pack on it, which will increase your health ever so slightly by 25 points, which is useful. You, all right, damage modifier. We'll go ahead and give this full metal jacket rounds for actually a little bit of damage. Why not? And we can chuck on a stability modulator. Now, when I was testing this thing before, I found this thing would just make the um, aiming really floaty, so I'm going to leave that off. But it's nice to have that as an option there. Moving on from that. Now, these ability modifiers. When you actually up, uh, load this mod onto your game, you can actually... It'll, it'll come up as a quest, and I'll show you that just now. Basically, what you do to unlock those special things is actually um, kill 10 people with it. There we go. It unlocks the Desert Worn Camera and Medic Level 1 ability, which is pretty nice. We'll get back onto the ammo bench here, or the weapon workbench here, and see what else we can do. Righto, we can change the colors of this thing. I want to keep this thing as a gunmetal gray as it is, because, yeah, those cameras don't look all too good. Although there is a green camera that I thought of using, but 
Nah, maybe not that one. You can attach a combat knife to it, which will increase the bash damage from the weapon. I'm pretty sure that's what it means. It will actually require a combat knife, which is interesting. We won't have to use that. And you can attach a strap, which will increase your carry weight by 25 points, virtually um, eliminating the weight of this weapon in your inventory, which is very useful, at least when you've got it equipped. Now, you can actually chuck on a name tag onto this, and uh, yeah, N7R has actually added uh, me to this list, so why the hell not? And you can attach a flashlight onto this if you feel like. We've already got one under the barrel. I feel like having two flashlights on the same weapon is a little bit overkill, but I don't really mind if we're not getting the functionality of that particular uh, flashlight there. Now, we can chuck on a barrel sight so it'll look more like the DMR from Halo Reach. You probably noticed that it was missing something, but now it isn't. And we can change our reticule color. I think this only works if we're using some sort of um, iron sight or laser sight because for whatever reason, um, this mod doesn't actually contain any um, scope textures. Which So we're just going to be using the regular scope, um, normal reticules when we aim down the scope, which is fine. Anyways, let's change that glow color to green and move on from that. Oh, I think we've come full circle at this point. No, wait, we can change the grip. Let's go for that DMR grip. There we go. So you can actually chuck on a full grip on this too, which is really awesome. That'll work in third person as well as first person. So that's nice. And I think that is about it. That is our DMR. We'll definitely create a couple of more of these things. Also, wait. No, let's, let's take these pistol bullets out and put some big old 308s in. That's the stuff. Okay, now this thing can um, hit and kill targets that are a little bit more strong than your basic gunner. Righto, we'll take this thing to Quincy Ruins, and we've got the place um, enhanced with more scripted spawn, so there'll be plenty of gunners to shoot at. Okay, so here we are outside of Quincy Ruins, and there should be heaps of gunners, because my frame rate is tanking now. That means there's got to be lots of enemy actors around. Probably a lot of raiders and super mutants as well. Anyways, this is what it looks like in third person. Looks pretty good. Got my name tag on it. Very, very nice. And uh, switching over to third person, animations line up pretty well. The weapon looks nice and sizable. Nice and an imposing weapon. So yeah, looks pretty good. I've also got a different one here. This one's got the foregrip. As you can tell, we're gripping under that in third person. Very good. And this is more of a sniper one with the advanced uh, barrel on it. With a suppressor, but you can't see the suppressor, so that's fine. Okay, so we've managed to annoy some of the gunners already, so we're not off to a great start. We'll go ahead and start shooting these turrets, and we'll work our way through here. Oh, man, there's actually quite a lot of gunners. Um, they gave up on trying to find me pretty quickly, though, which is nice. What I'll do here is try to take out the ones... Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's cutting through them very, very nicely indeed. We can tell that we're getting pretty good damage out of this thing with um, floating damage. That's pretty good. And the laser sight is uh, making good on that hip fire there. So that's pretty good too. Now I am uh, deliberately playing during the day here simply because when I do um, eventually get detected, I'll just bring out the loud and proud one so you can hear what this thing sounds like unsuppressed. There's the Assaultron quote-unquote dominatrix. I, I still don't get that. That really disturbs me. We'll take that out quickly. And it is time to bring out our automatic one. Oh, there's another one. This one has incendiary bullets. Oh, God, there's another Assaultron right there. Let's just hide around the corner, wait for that laser to finish. And there we go. Okay. I think we've cleared out the graveyard part of it, but now we're going to have gunners flooding in from basically everywhere. This is the hollow side on this with a yellow reticule, which looks really good. We made this entire weapon glow yellow. Okay, let's just back off a bit. I think we're in a little bit over our heads here. Let's try to draw them out in this sort of a direction. Okay, coming out of danger, which is nice. Back into caution. Let's go over to our sniper one. This one's got the energy barrel on it and also a thermal scope, which, as you can tell, not very usable during the day. We're getting staggered majorly here. Okay, we have to find out whoever's staggering us that bad and kill them quickly. And why not use this thing in bats whilst we've got the chance to see what this thing can do? We'll pop a critical there. Nice three shot burst in bats, which is nice. Like I said before, this is probably the best first fire weapon I've ever used. There's no jamming or delay of the bullets at all. It's really nice and fluid feeling. 
I don't know how you've done it, but it's actually really, really impressive. Now, in terms of the logistics of this weapon, and I'm talking about the size of it, um, the variant I've installed is the full one. It has the quests and everything like that, and um, yeah, it's actually... It's, it's, it's really big. It's like 1.7 gig for everything, and that includes all of the textures, all of the scripting to make the um, ammo thing move. So yeah, it's quite sizable, but you can actually get a light version, which comes in at um, uh, like 400 megabytes, just over that. So that's a nice option, I suppose. You do miss out on a lot of the textures and a little bit of the customization in that way. But yeah, it's nice if you've got a budget, a limit to what you'd actually need or want on your um, PC or hard drive. I'm wondering if the um, light version will be ported. I think you've got some sort of AK. AK is usually stagger me like that, so you get a crit. There we go. I've got an AK project redux happening at the moment. Some of the gunners spawn with it. Usually, you'll, they'll stagger you quite violently when they're using it. Ooh. Knocked him right down with the um, <laughs> sniper effect there. And yep, looks like with uh, more scripted spawns, there's a whole lot more gunners to shoot this time. Which is nice, because I probably don't have to round all of these guys up. They'll probably all just come running to me. Granted, we are sort of sitting at a choke point and drawing them in like that. Alright, we'll move back over to our automatic one. Notice how the rate of fire on this one is... Or is yeah the rate of fire is good but the spread on this thing seems to be very little too there seems to be absolutely no spread whatsoever which i don't know maybe it's a futuristic weapon design keeping you on target hang on it's actually that um stabilizer on top of the rail that you saw there. that's what's happening there it makes you very very accurate indeed and takes out all of the recoil in fact it makes the recoil so little that it's um negative recoil it'll push the muzzle down which is interesting, but still, it's nice to not having to wrestle with the weapon as you shoot it. So yeah, um, in the great words of uh, Todd Howard and on this weapon, it just works. Okay, I think it's as good as time as any to go topside at this point, so that's what we should do. And uh, we'll see if we can get some good vantage points on these gunners to shoot them. I deliberately came here instead of Immersive Gunners Plaza simply because, uh, yeah, I wanted to use this thing as a proper DMR and the scope was pretty much useless in a weapon of a close quarters nature. Or as in a place of close quarters nature. Now, I have found that um, the flashlight on this thing is a little bit glitchy. Um, like, the flashlight will actually sort of stay there when it really shouldn't. That's kind of bizarre. Um, but if I go back into... First person is gone. There, gone. There, gone. Weird. Also, a couple of the animations are strange. Um, whenever I stop moving with this weapon, the it seems to put in a little bit of a zoom in, which is kind of odd. If I can find a thin enough wall, we can actually um, look through the wall. Like, our face goes through the wall and we can see right through it. Also, it was a good time to be wearing double acrobat armor there. Okay, getting topside didn't really help us that much. I think we've eliminated the bulk of the gunners at this point, so we'll take it to them. Switch back to our um, automatic one, which does stutter our game for a bit. Uh, yeah, my computer has to think a little about um, getting these textures up and running because they are very, very high quality indeed. That's probably what makes the file size so high, but that's all right. Right, oh, show yourselves, gunners. Come on. You know you want to. There's a bunch of frag mines that is always tripping my bat system, but never mind that. Okay, there appears to be a small congregation over in this sort of a direction. They are really grenade happy today. Oh, yeah, here they are. Okay, we'll go for two bursts on you. Ah, looks like we are penalized rather heavily for um, using bats with the automatic receiver. Maybe this is what the um, aim stabilizer and recoil reducer does. It makes you use this thing um, in real time rather than bats by just giving you a huge penalty, so you don't really want to use it. All right, looks like we're down to the last turret, so we'll quickly jump down here. We've got the acrobat leg, so we don't have to worry about killing ourselves from fall damage. One last gunner-aligned turret, and then Quincy will be secured. There we go. So, 
that was the BR-77 in uh, Quincy with lots of extra scripted spawnings. And as for the, um, yeah, that's what happens when you lean into things when you stop moving, which is kind of weird. Also, another quirk that I've noticed with the third-person animations, if you're firing this thing, standing still without aiming down sights, you'll do this weird head thing. Maybe not with this one. Going over to the burst. There we go. The burst fire one does that. Not sure what that one is all about. Let's see if it happens with semi-auto. Nope, it's just a burst fire quirk. Okay, so I suppose that gives you an idea of where the animations aren't so great. But all in all, I'm actually quite pleased with this. Also, I'll show you these in third person. Very nice. Okay, now we've got a feel for this thing against a whole lot of enemy mobs. Let's go and take on an overpowered boss and see how it does there. Righto, looks like Swan has gotten himself mixed up with some more spawning uh, <laughs> rust devils over there. But he's making short work of those guys that are going to be dying very quickly. In fact, let's help him out a bit, even if it does make us more detectable by Swan. So right now we've got the um, night vision scope on this, and it's actually kind of useless because uh, if you do have night person, um, you get the night vision when you crouch at night, and when that mixes with the scope, it's a little bit on the uh, broken side there. It's just too bright, you can't really see through it. And yeah, that's just something about the vanilla game. It sort of obsoletes these scopes with the, um, with the right perks. Anyways, uh, we are making short work of Swan here with our semi-auto firing <laughs> thing here. And yeah, the reason why we are doing that is simply because we're getting those sneak attack crits on him constantly. And also, um, knocking him down with Sniper constantly. So, basically he had no chance. Okay, let's have a look at some of the upgrades that we've gotten from this thing. Because yeah, we've been slaying a lot of monsters and... Yeah, they, the model actually reward you for killing things with this thing and reward you with more customization. So let's skip back to the workbench and have a look. Righto, so first upgrade we got from ability slot number one is the field medic level one. So that'll give us a little bit of health regen when not in combat. That'll stack really well with life giver rank three, ghoulish, and also solar powered. So yeah, we're going to be super health regen now, which is yeah going to add even more to the wolverine powers of the soul survivor. Mod slot number two, Warlord number one. Slight increase of damage resistance and endurance, which um, requires five psychos, so there you go. Interesting perk to have. Slot number three, Scavenger level one. Luck intelligence carry weight increased slightly, so you do get a little bit more bonuses for using this weapon, killing people with it, so yeah, it gives you incentive to keep this thing around. So uh, yeah. We've actually got these things showing up here as well, which is really, really cool. And uh, judging by these level 1s here, these things can be further upgraded further on when you kill more things with it. Have an unlocked uh, mod ability slot 4. So yeah, let's um, kill some more things. Probably off screen because you've already seen this thing enough. And we'll come back here and check out what that's all about. Oh, what the hell, I've already cleared most of this stuff. Uh, this side of um, the scrapyard out, so why the hell not? Um, show you this against some tanky ass super mutants. So right now they're locked in a fight with bears So we'll help out the super mutants by fighting the bears at this point And then we can get into sneak attack crits with the DMR and let me tell you it's really really powerful there Okay, looks like we've unlocked the next thing I can't really read what that says now because I'm locked in a little bit of some combat So we'll go ahead and kill all of these super mutants very quickly mind because we've just got that ability to sneak attack crit over and over. We've got a weapon that doesn't give us much recoil and oh, and the sniper knockdowns with the burst fire effect. Okay, maybe that shouldn't happen, but damn, this thing can absolutely pulverize things. And we're playing on very hard too, so yeah. Having a 50% damage penalty does not deter this weapon from exceptional performance at all, especially when you can just snack, stack, sorry, sneak attack criticals all the time like this. And look at them just charging out only to die like this. This is too good. This is like, this is like a shooting range, really. Okay, I think we can move up at, at this point. I think we've killed a fairly decent amount of them now. That should be a couple left scattered around somewhere. We'll track them down. Once we get close enough, we'll be able to tell where they are. 
There we go, there's one. I think I drew them all out just before and were able to slaughter them very, very easily indeed. So, looks like there's only Gotta but a few left. Sooner or later. Yep, there's the glowing doggo down there. Get out of here. Unstoppable. unstoppable on that. Okie dokie. Looks like we are done with this place. Let's quickly hit a workbench and see what we can get out of this. Righto, we've got some more in slot one. We can have assassin level one, which lowers a chance of being detected. Hell yeah, that sounds really usable. And what else have we got here? Slot 4, Tactician Level 1. Slight increase to action points and action point regeneration for some jet. Okay, so it looks like that is the basic rundown of this weapon. I don't think I've scratched the surface with this thing, but I purposely don't look like to put every single thing about these weapons in. I'd prefer to let you um, use them yourself and uh, find out what all of the mods have to offer. So I think I'm going to leave things there. This video is probably too long at this point anyway. Oh, there's the inspect animation. Nice. That's something I don't usually show off, but if you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the description. If there is going to be a console port of this, I believe it will be on the light version, which doesn't have the Americana the quests or anything like that so it is a little bit of a bummer but you still get all of that customization and it's a worthy mod to have even without all of that all of that stuff is just icing on the cake what you do have basically is a really really solid weapon mod here with great customization there's really nothing i could complain about here everything about this mod is pretty fucking great if you ask me so links will be in the description if you feel like downloading this for yourself which i highly recommend you do You've done a great job on this. Good work. Thank you for watching, guys.